Hey YouTubers, welcome back to John's Garage. Today we've got a 2000 Acura 3.2 TL that seems to be having an ignition timing problem. Been chasing this problem for a while. The symptoms right now is that it, it starts up really rough. After running for a few minutes and driving down the street, gets into closed loop condition, seems to run better, but I think it's an ignition timing problem. So today, this is going to be a two-part video. First, we're going to change the camshaft sensor right under this cover here. Camshaft position sensor. So, AutoZone Dura last part, SU4171 camshaft sensor. Then for part two of the video, we're going to go down below at the bottom of the timing belt and change the crankshaft sensor. That's AutoZone part SU4772. This car has, let's see, it has 601,753 miles original sensors. Never been changed. The belt's been changed a few times, but never the sensors. So I think it's got an intermittent problem with one or the other, and they both talk to the ECU, the engine control unit, the computer, to set the timing. So I think one of these might be intermittently faulty, so I'm just going to change them because by the time you tear this down, take off the timing belt, it's a lot of work just to test them. So these weren't too expensive. Uh, let's see, the camshaft sensor retails for $47.99. Crankshaft position sensor retails for $83.99. Have the ship to home order combined, they're over $100. This month they had a 20% off. So free shipping, 20% uh, off wasn't too expensive. You'd pay a mechanic a lot more than that just to troubleshoot and diagnose with no repair at all. And changing a timing belt's a couple of hundred bucks, so it's a pricey repair if you gotta pay someone. So I'm gonna show you how to do it today with a few basic hand tools. So Number one thing we've got to do is get the engine set to top dead center. So I'm going to do that right now. Okay, so we used our floor jack to jack up the front of the car using the structural member on the center of the car. And we have supported the car on jack stands left and right. proper spot and we have chalk the back wheel so the car does not move front and back chalks on that wheel and we have removed the front wheel because we want to get to this hole right here to stick a wrench to turn the engine but now we also have to take off a few engine covers so that we can see the position of the engine. So I'm going to do that right now. Okay, so we'll start with the front cover here. Just turn that a quarter turn, turn that a quarter turn, pops right off. Set that aside somewhere safe. Ten millimeter socket, counterclockwise, four bolts here. Get this black cover off here. Now we need to get to this cover, 
couple of bolts on it, 10 millimeters, so let's take that off. Okay, so once you get all five of these bolts out of the top cover here, you notice it hits the dipstick tube, so we're going to have to remove that dipstick tube to get it out. I think Honda really over-engineered putting five bolts on a plastic cover. <laughs> okay, just alongside the dipstick tube on the front, go down about six inches, and there is a bolt. I've got a socket on it, 10 millimeter. I'm going to get a wrench on it. And that wrench is sitting just on the, the uh, belt uh, tensioner pulley there, idler pulley. So that's where we're going to remove the bolt to get the dipstick tube out. Okay, it took some work, but got the cover off. So one of the things I did is on this tensioner pulley was I got my zero offset. See how there's no bend in it? 14 millimeter and it's, it's like 18 inches long and I put, the, I put the deep side of it this way onto the idler pulley bolt or the, the tensioner, I should call it a tensioner, it really is a tensioner and you see how that moves so this is the um, alternator belt so putting that on there and then um, releasing the tension so going back this way to release the tension pull the belt off with your other hand and then let it go and then take that wrench off so we've got the the belt for the alternator that's in pretty good shape still there's no cracks or anything on the inside or outside so it doesn't need to be replaced yet we'll change that in another job pull the dipstick tube out and so the dipstick tube there I showed you that bolt that um, we had to go down about six inches on that tube and set the wrench right on the tensioner pulley and that it's a 10 millimeter bolt and finally got that out so that lets the dipstick tube move just enough to pull this cover out of the way as you'll see here on this cover that the silly design here the way Honda made this it has a bolt sticking right through the cover that you can't get it around there unless you do that so zoom out here so we have one two three, four, five, because this one goes through the cover. So those are our five bolts. Let's set it on the floor so you can see it. So there's one, two, three, four, and that one is through there. It's kind of deep in. And then just below that, the oil dipstick bolt right about there get that out so we can flex that dipstick tube out of the way a little bit to pull this cover out because of this protruding part here. So now we finally got that cover off. We'll set that aside and uh, now we can begin to set our timing at top dead center and uh, we can get to our, our camshaft position sensors that out of the wrench out of the way. So this looks to be the clip for it. And then we'll follow the wires down. It's behind this cover. We've got to get this pulley off. So we're going to bust that nut loose before we remove this timing belt. So I'll show you the next couple of tricks here. So loosening that nut by using the tension on that belt is going to be important. Okay, so here's a big tool we're going to use to hold the uh, engine from turning and this is a tool used for timing belt work it's from JTC it's a 1902 auto link from JTC auto tools and this is specifically for Honda Acura and 
this tool is indispensable. Okay, so what we have here is a, a breaker bar with some extensions, 19 millimeter socket on the main crank pulley. So I'm gonna turn this and then we're gonna watch the engine move because we wanna to get to top dead center. So turn this till we get lined up. So I'm going to check the mark on the pulley and see if we're at top dead center. Okay, so we have our camshaft that looks like it's a top dead center, but the true way to confirm is down here. There is a plastic point, got too much light. Dim that a little bit. Okay, plastic point sticking down, and underneath it on our pulley, we have a white dot. So that white dot is exactly lined up where we want top dead center, and to the right of that, you'll see three little hash marks, little notches in the pulley. That's for ignition timing, just to the right of that. But we're not doing timing. We want top dead center with a white mark, and then up here on our camshaft pulley we've got top dead center get the cam in the right position there we go so we are definitely a top dead center so now I've removed the the socket that I was using and put this big tool on there I gotta get it on the right position but that is going to be braced to hold the engine from moving while I loosen that nut, uh, sorry, the bolt on the camshaft pulley up top. So the up top, that's a, that's a 17, and I'm going to break that loose, but I don't want the engine turning while I do it. So the, the belt is going to hold that, and the big wrench at the bottom is going to hold the engine from turning. Okay, got our 17 on there. Let's break that loose. Okay, since loosening this bolt got the uh, timing off a little bit, I went down and reset it again to get my white mark on the crank pulley. Got this one lined up and I went ahead and marked the belt with some tape because we're going to take this belt off part way, just the top, and I want to make sure the teeth align back up exactly. I don't want to be off a tooth or anything. And we've got this bolt here is just it's just finger tight right now. Let's see if I get the camera in here. You can see it. Anyway, see it's just finger tight. It's coming out. So we're going to go ahead and take that all the way off there. That is a long bolt. <laughs> so we'll take that off. And then we'll get the, the belt off by just slipping off the top, and we'll pull the pulley off. Okay, before we pull that pulley all the way off, there's one really important step I've got to show you here. We have to lock that timing belt tensioner in place. So to do that, we're going to use what Honda recommends is to take one of these battery clamps. So take one of these. It's a long threaded rod, so I'm going to take this nut off. I think you can use either one. Take the nut off of there, and it's got a little J hook on the bottom. So we'll just take this out. We're going to go over there and we're going to lock the uh, timing belt tensioner in its current position before we remove the belt. That's super important. So I've got the, the bolt out of the middle, but I have not removed it yet. The belt is still on. Well, unfortunately, to put that battery hold down post in the tensioner 
we got to do it through the back camshaft cover. So I went ahead and took the tensioner bolts off the power steering, took the power steering belt off, and now I'm taking off the five bolts that are holding the plastic cover on the rear timing belt cover, the top cover. We've got to take that off. It's unfortunate, but that's the way Honda designed it. Okay, getting the back cover out was a lot of work. So I made this little bed on top of the engine to cushion it and laid my head here, put one arm, my right arm down here, my left arm down here, and got the five bolts out. Now this cover's ready to come out. So I can wiggle this coming forward towards the power stirring pump and it's out. So this cover's just like the one in the back where there's one, two, three, four, five bolts. So there's one, two, three, four, five. And just like the front cover, this back one has one right through here. They're all the same size, but my God, what a lot of work to get that out. Anyway, this has the same markings. I have a white mark. I don't know if you can see it. There's a white mark in the in there. So that's um, lined up with this white mark there for the top dead center so that's the back pulley just like the front pulley I've got I marked the belt too just to make it easier that pulley does not need to come off what we're gonna do is get on the back side of it way down on the back side there and we're gonna put the um, the long hold down bolt for the battery that threaded rod and we're going to put that down the back side of that belt following the path of the belt on the outside of the belt so let me get that done okay I've got the two battery hold downs out you notice one's a little bit longer than the other by about an inch I'm going to use the shorter of the two so I'll take the short one and use that to thread into the timing belt tensioner. Okay, I got it threaded in. I actually ended up using the longer of the two because the shorter one has some threads about here that are just a little bit damaged from the hold down bracket on the battery. I mean the bolt when it's on the battery only goes down about that far and then the bracket sits there. So anyway, it worked out. I put the long one in. You just put this end in like this and then you start threading it clockwise by hand and then it bottoms out at a certain point when it hits that uh, timing belt tensioner and don't force it just turn it by hand and it'll stop at a certain point and you're there so that will hold the timing belt tensioner which is under extreme force it will keep it from moving um, so that we don't have to redo the tensioner okay um, I'm gonna skip to the lower cover removal that we're going to need for part two when we do the crankshaft position sensor. So to get the lower plastic cover off we got to take off the main pulley. So I've rigged something up here that I've used before. It works very well. So I've got a jack stand raised up to support my wrench here and I've got my breaker bar 18 inch 18 or 24 bigger the better and I got some uh, extensions, half inch, and I've got the um, special tool to hold that, and it's braced against the uh, frame of the car under there. Let's see if you can see that. It's braced against solid steel, and uh, so that is locked in place. And then I'm going to um, put a pipe over this and I'm gonna I'm gonna stand by the passenger mirror with that long pipe and I'm gonna press down counterclockwise to break that bolt on the main crankshaft break it loose and it's gonna make a loud bang when it breaks loose and uh, it's all we gotta do is break it loose and then we can remove that pulley 
So I'm going to do that. Well, I probably don't need the big pipe. I've had this off before, and it is torqued to spec, so... Just... There we go. That's loose. Okay, so now I'm going to remove that special large black wrench that's holding the, the pulley there. I'm going to remove that and just use the breaker bar to reposition everything at top dead center. I'm going to have the crank top dead center and both cam pulleys at their top dead center where I've got the white marks. And that front pulley also has a mark that says number one. And that's important that you have the number one cylinder on that front camshaft pulley. So I, I'm going to line everything up. That bolt is pretty loose. Might tighten it a little bit as I move it, but I'll get everything lined up where I want it and then just remove that main crank bolt and then I can start removing the lower plastic cover. Okay, so we got the main crank bolt off and you always put motor oil, engine oil on those threads, dip it in some oil and then thread it back in there when you put it back on and torque it to the spec and I'll give you that spec when we put it on. But uh, now that I've got this off, I can pull off the pulley and there's a key, a little tiny key in there. I'll show you when I get it out. Don't lose that key. Okay, so here's with the, uh, the main bolt out of there and at the top, see if we can get some focus here. At the top, uh, you'll see a key there. Let me see if I can zoom in even more. Let it focus. Come on, focus. There. You see that key? At the very top. Don't lose that key when you pull off the, the pulley. That's going to align it and keep it from spinning on that. Okay, so that's important that you don't lose it. Okay, I just grabbed the pulley with two hands and just slid it off. And it has a it has a splined shaft, and it has that keyway at the top, so you can see the keyway, and the key actually stayed on there, which is fine. It's a a billet, a steel billet. I'm just going to leave it in place there, as long as it doesn't fall out, I won't lose it. So uh, I'm going to take that bolt and that bolt. There's seven of them that hold this lower cover on, so I'm going to take those off and uh, get the lower cover off. And then, like I say, this is for step two where the lower, uh, lower cover has to come off for the crankshaft position sensor, but we're still working on doing the camshaft sensor as step one. Okay, so to get the last bolt out of the lower cover, We've already loosened this um, oil uh, dipstick tube, the pipe for that. So we, we took out this bolt right here. So there's another cover bolt right about here behind it. So um, just go under the car and clean really well around this. Get, you know, use some brake clean and clean really well before you pluck this out so you don't get anything contaminated inside the oil pan. So uh, just pluck this out, set it aside, clean it up, blow through it, make sure there's nothing inside of it. And then um, we'll get that last lower bolt, lower cover bolt out, because there's seven total for the lower cover. And once you get that dipstick tube out, stuff a paper towel on the hole um, at the top of the oil pan so nothing falls in there. Just Take a small corner of a paper towel, you know, like half a paper towel, wad it up and then stick it in there. Don't stuff it in, just cover the hole with it so that no debris falls in that oil pan hole. Okay, at last, we got the lower cover off. So there were seven bolts. There's one. Let's start again. One, two, three, four, five six, seven. So, seven bolts. I'm going to clean this thing because this right here is our top dead center uh, white mark. Also used for the timing. Um, 
when the flywheel's moving, got your timing light on that. So I'm going to clean this and I'm going to repaint that tip white to make it easier to see with the timing light. But uh, God, what a bear this was to get off. It does have a rubber seal and uh, it, it helps, you know, channel oil to the bottom if you got a leak somewhere. But uh, we'll get this all cleaned up and get it ready to go back in the car later. So here's with our camshaft sensor is right there underneath that metal plate. So we're going to do that as job number two. That's our oil dipstick with a rag covering it so nothing falls in there and gets our oil pan dirty. That's our timing belt still on there. We're going to leave it on there for this job. We're going to change out the crank position sensor a second, but first we're going to do our, our camshaft position sensor, which is up under here, so we're going to be up here again in a minute. So now it's finally time to start pulling this front timing belt, or the timing belt, off the front cam. So I'm just going to keep working that to the side till I get it all the way off. Okay, so we cut the belt off, just this one cam, and we wiggled this off. It took a lot of wiggling, but you can see the, the key stays in there. It's right in the top there. The, the key is part of the wheel. It's not separate. It's not that I can see. No, it's part of it. So that's what the back of it looks like. These must communicate with the sensors. There's only... Those are... There are four of them. There's only on half the pulley. And let's see what I was saying. There's the one... Six, three, five, two, four. So the one is what we wanted the top dead center white mark there with the one. Okay, so that's off. So with the belt just laying there and the, the pulley off, you see the keyway there. We need to undo, there's the sensors. There's one sensor, two sensors. Comes in the kit. There's two in one kit. We need that bolt to come out and that bolt to come out and then this cover will come off with the sensors. So we're going to undo those two bolts now. Okay, so these uh, two bolts are 12 millimeter and they're in at, the book says 16 foot-pounds. So that's not a lot. Okay, so we finally achieved our objective here. Got this loose and looks like this is where it needs to be unplugged. So let's unplug that. Squeeze the connector. Pull that out. Looks clean in there, no corrosion. That's good. A little bit of dusty dirt in that one. But, um, get that out of the belt there. That's dirty inside there. 600,000 miles worth of dirt. Okay, so to remove this end of the connector, there's a bolt here, 10 millimeter. thing comes out now. Okay, so on the camshaft position sensor, we got the old one here and the new one here. They're the same. So the first thing I did was transfer over the metal clip, push this little connector down, pull that out of the old one, snap it into the new one, and now let's um, let's put this together in the aluminum frame. Okay, so we've got it all cleaned up here. We've got it mounted. This is ready to go. The connector looks the same on the inside. We've got it all cleaned up. There's the two sensors for the camshaft position. We can put it back in the car. Okay, so we put our two bolts in. 
torqued them to 16 foot pounds and put our connector mount back on there. Let's line up our connector and snap it in. There we go. Nice little solid click. It's in. Now let's get the uh, the pulley back on there. Okay, we use some uh, brake clean to clean the pulley off, and it slid right on real easy. It was hard to get off, but went on real easy. Okay, I'm underneath the car by the crankshaft pulley. This is a timing belt, and. There are two gray connectors. There they are. So we want the one towards the back. Not the one closest to the camera, but the one to the back, slightly to the left there. There's a clip at the top. Squeeze that while pulling down on the wire. And this wire routes behind that tensioner that's on that pulley wheel see it looks like a a round barrel a long barrel and it's got a plastic clip the, so the wire goes around behind that in the plastic clip and it comes down right here is the crankshaft position sensor so we gotta get to that second clip in the back there. Not the one with this wire coming down here, but the one with the wire in the back. Okay, we got the crankshaft position sensor out. So this goes on the automatic tensioner for the timing belt. So you just wiggle that off and then uh, it kind of snakes around and this is what the clip looks like so there's no there's nothing to depress on this so to release the clip it's up in the car that you have to press I'll show you where that's at so you can see Oops, the two clips there. So it's not that front clip, it's that back clip. And on the top of that clip, there's a tab you press and then pull down on the wire and it'll come out. So that's the secret there. Don't get the camera up in there any further. So that's where it clips in. So just snaking the wire around the right path to get it up there and put that wire manager around the automatic tensioner. So here's our, our new part and here's our old part. So we've got to move this clip over, unfasten it. It's a wire manager and then you can see there's a little nut there we got to undo and then we put that metal piece on this new one and then there's a little wire manager here it's pretty long so this whole wire manager piece plastic has to come over on the new one. Okay, we got our crank shaft position sensor plugged in. We routed the wire, it comes through and it comes all the way down and is bolted in place. One thing I noticed about this new crankshaft position sensor 
you put anything metal near it, like this, this little bolt when I had it apart, it just attaches right on there. Whereas the old one was kind of weak, lacking some magnetism. This one seems to have a much stronger magnet. So maybe that was my problem. I don't know. But uh, we've got the wire plugged in and routed on the crankshaft position. Okay, so here's a tip on how to get this old belt back on the front cam uh, pulley. So, the trick that the factory manual won't tell you, the trick is not to take out the automatic tensioner. The trick is to remove this 14 millimeter idler pulley bolt completely out. Just take it out and it has a tapered um, fit to it. So you can get it back in once you start screwing it in. Um, this idler comes completely off. You can inspect the bearing. This one's good so I'm going to put it back on. But that's the trick. So you know, line up your belt. Make sure that You've got this mark at the top lined up. I don't know if I'm focusing very good here, but this mark right here lines up with this exactly. So that's our crankshaft. It never moved. That would be really hard to move, but that never moved. <laughs> So I got that lined up. We got our marks lined up on our front cam and our rear cam. The tape doesn't really matter. It's the white mark that I'm lining up on the teeth of the cam with the backing plate there. So we got both cams aligned and the crank aligned. The belt is on. I just got to tighten up the idler pulley tapered bolt and then uh, everything should be good. I did not remove the automatic belt tensioner. That, you only do that with a brand new belt. Okay, so we just torque the idler pulley. After we put the belt on, we put the idler pulley and threaded that bolt in that has the tapered sleeve. Just torqued it to 33 foot pounds. Maybe a little more. So now this member goes on concave side out. The curve goes out. And then we put on our main pulley. And we get that key lined up. bolt here, our crank bolt, and thread that in by hand. No need to get that cross threaded and damaged. And then we need a 19 millimeter socket. And then we torque that to 181 foot-pounds. Oops, I can't torque yet. I should back up a little bit, get ahead of myself. We need to get our special tool on there to hold this to keep it from moving. Okay, I'm going to have to turn that back to put it on there. It doesn't matter, we're going to line up our marks and check everything when we're done here. There we go. 
Now this time, because we're going the opposite way, this is going to hit the floor of the garage and that's going to hold it in place. So turn that, there we go, hit the, the floor. There we go. Okay, now we can start torquing this thing and it will not move. All the way to 181 foot-pounds. And that's how you torque the main crank crankshaft bolt. 181 foot-pounds. Okay, we just finished torquing the main crank uh, pulley bolt to 181 foot-pounds. And we still have our special tool holding that crank pulley, uh, you know, the, the bar is against the floor, so it's locked in place. Now we're going to torque the cam pulley to 67 foot-pounds. See, it won't move, that belt won't move because we've got that tool locking the crank pulley in place. Okay, that is torqued. 67 foot-pounds. You probably noticed when we're doing this job that I did not remove the um, engine mount. So that's the right side engine mount. That's still there because we did not do a belt change. So we left the uh, power steering belt. You'd have to remove that section of the engine mount to get this belt off. So we're not changing that at this time. We're not changing the timing belt. So we didn't have to remove the uh, side engine mount. But if we're changing belts, we would definitely have to remove that and you'd have to put support, you know, pieces of wood underneath the engine and a little jack to uh, lift it a tiny bit while you undo these bolts. But we're not changing belts, so we did not remove the engine mount. So now that we've torqued the pulley bolts, it's time to remove the battery hold down threaded rod that's holding the timing position sensor in place. So I'm going to lay up on that blanket on top of the engine and, and put my arm, my right arm, over the, uh, down here, over this torque rod. I'm going to put my arm down there and get that battery uh, support threaded rod out of there. So we don't need that anymore. Well, I just realized I skipped one step kind of important, but I'm going to take this bolt back out. It's okay. It won't move the timing or anything. I'm going to take the bolt out, take the pulley off, put my lower cover back on, because I forgot to put the lower cover, um, and the seven bolts to hold the plastic cover on, and then I'll put this pulley back on and retorque that crank bolt to 181 foot-pounds. No big deal. It's not going to move anything around. The timing belt's not going to be messed up or anything so uh, my bad I'll fix that real quick put the cover back okay I put the lower cover back on fixed my mistake got the timing on the crank top dead center white front pulley top dead center white rear pulley top dead center white everything's timed per okay I pulled off the tape off the belt and see how the marks are lined up and put the cover on this actually slides down once you get it in place it's always fun to hold a camera okay we got the front cam cover with five bolts we got the rear cam cover with five bolts Got the lower cover with seven bolts. The timing is set perfect. Now it is time to install the dipstick tube and the little 10 millimeter bolt that holds that dipstick tube. So let's do that. So the dipstick is now secure. Okay, so now it's time to mount the power steering pump and that is held in with um, one nut 
on the front side and one bolt on the back side and the bolt goes right there line that up and put that bolt in and then there's a long bolt that stays in place that adjusts up and down with this and there's a nut on the front of it there you can see right down there where the nut's going to go the adjustment point is here where the screwdriver is pointing that will uh, make the belt tighter or looser so as this comes up then the belt gets tighter so as you're turning that nut tightening that nut the um, it's anyway so the back nut you want it to be close to tight but, but loose enough so that this bracket will swivel and then after you get your belt tensioned correctly then you tighten this last nut and that's after it's tensioned so we're going to leave it loose enough to move okay so on the power steering pump that nut on the bottom front has to be a little bit loose and the bolt in the back has to be a little bit loose and then it can be moved up and down by this adjusting nut to make the belt tighter or looser so as we tighten it it pulls the pump up and makes the belt tight so tighten this to make the belt tight loosen this to loosen the belt after you got the belt at the right tension so that there's just a tiny bit of deflection in the side then you tighten the nut and the bolt so this is your adjustment and then you lock it in place with the nut and the bolt okay so using a 12 millimeter deep socket we tighten this nut to make the belt tight so on the belt at the widest spot we have just a little bit of deflection maybe a quarter inch deflection so it's really easy to tighten the belt if it's if we get a squeal or if it's too loose so you don't want to over tighten it and ruin the bearings in your pump so put undue stress on that pulley so let's uh, let's go with this adjustment now we've got it where we want let's lock down the nut and the bolt to lock it in place so now we're going to put in the alternator pulley belt sorry the alternator belt and we're going to use this zero offset 14 millimeter and who made this this is made by JTC Auto Tools number 3212 so JTC the same company that made the um, crankcase pulley um, tool to lock it in place that big tool there JTC same guys that make this so you take your zero offset and put it on this tensioner pulley and move it back up yeah there we go so push to the back of the car and lift it up and then loop your belt on and then let it go and it's automatic tension okay so using the zero offset wrench stay outside of the alternator wiring and the power steering hose so be on this side with the wrench not on this side otherwise you're going to have restricted movement so if you get on this side you can get way down here and then you can pull way up with the wrench and to get the belt on so that's the secret the wrench should go right next to the power steering reservoir on the outside of the hose and wiring okay and then you get lots of movement and you're going to need that to get the after you get the alternator belt on get under the car and check that this is a grooved belt so make sure it's in the crank pulley correctly it's in the alternate or the air conditioner grooves first time I did this it was off so I had to go back on top and use the JTC wrench loosen it put my hand down behind the headlight and put this belt on 
And there we go. It's all good now. So it's on the tensioner. So this this goes under the air conditioner and then up over the alternator and then comes down behind the alternator and goes over this tensioner and then around the main pulley. So it's the alternator and air conditioner belt with a tensioner that's uh, automatic. You just move it, put the belt, to let it go. Okay, before I put the the beauty covers, the plastic covers for the engine, I'm going to start it up before I put the wheel on or anything. I want to make sure everything's running right and then before it gets too hot I'm going to close it all up and hopefully everything goes good. Okay, I don't know if I mentioned this earlier, but when I changed the crankcase position sensor, I noticed the new one had a lot more, uh, a stronger magnet than the old one, because when I was putting the little uh, bolt that holds it in place, um, I had it on my workbench, and the bolt just jumped and attached to it, like it jumped like three inches, and my screwdriver and everything, my wrench, just, just bam, super strong magnet in that new crankcase position sensor compared to the old one. The old one had, you know, maybe half as much magnetism. I'm hoping that fixed the problem. So let's, uh, let's see what happens. Well, my camera doesn't focus very good anymore. Probably using it on too many greasy cars. There we go, 94 degrees in my garage. It's hot, SoCal in July. Okay, this car has 601,753. Let's see what happens when we start it up. Let's zoom out so we can see the instruments here. Let's take a look at the tack. Sounds like the timing's good. Man, it used to be when I'd start it up, it was like coughing and wheezing and it sounded horrible. Let's do another start. No foot on the gas. Let's put the air conditioner on. Air conditioner belt sounds good. I don't hear any squealing. So I can hear the engine, I'll put the window down here. There, air is off. We'll do another start. Let rest for a minute. No foot on the gas. God, it starts great. Well, I changed the crankcase position sensor and the camshaft position sensor because they both talk to the ECU, the engine control unit, the computer. So I'm really thinking the crankcase position sensor after 600,000 miles, finally the magnet was getting weak. 
and throwing off the timing. It seemed to drive fine on the freeways when the car was hot, but starting up in the morning in the first couple miles, terrible idle problems. The tack would be bouncing around. The car would almost stall when sitting at a red light for the first two or three miles. This seems to be working great. Maybe that was the problem. I never got a check engine light for crankcase or camshaft position sensors. I just got the assorted misfire, you know, random multiple misfire, uh, you know, spark, one, two, three, four, various ones, but it was never consistent. So it was just a lot of random misfires. And sometimes I'd be pulling out of the parking lot at work and go to step on the gas a little bit, going like five miles an hour, want to accelerate to 10 miles an hour, and the car would almost like backfire. That's how I could tell the timing was off. So this, uh, this looks like it's working really well. Worked on it a few hours last night when the part arrived at six o'clock. Um, I think for four hours, four and a half hours, and then today for like six hours. So this is a long job. And the thing that I wish Honda would really fix is the, um, the covers, the plastic covers, the top two, have five 10 millimeter bolts each, and the bottom cover, this is the timing belt cover. There's a top cover, uh, rear and a top front, and a, and a bottom cover. Those, those covers, they, there's a total of 17 10 millimeter bolts. They take hours to get your hands in there to get those little bolts out of there. So that was the majority of the job, taking off the covers and then putting on the covers for the timing belt. The nice thing is the timing belt looks okay. It's got 200,000 miles on it. And it's still in good shape. I was considering changing it, but then it's a little bit more work and I didn't buy one. So, uh, one way you can tell the condition without taking all those covers off is I always change all my belts at the same time, the timing, the alternator, slash air conditioner, and the power steering. The power steering, really, that belt takes a lot of, a lot of wear. I, it, that one is just starting to look like it's getting worn out. Some little tiny bit of cracking showing, but it's not going to break. But the alternator slash power steering looks great and the timing belt looks great with 200,000 miles and underneath all those covers there was really no oil leaks anywhere so it's all clean in there just a little bit of the usual SoCal sand at the bottom that I just cleaned out when I changed the crank position sensor but overall pretty clean um, belts are in good shape I think the car is is going to be good now. Let's start it one more time. Yeah, there's no no hesitation, no uh, uh, timing issues, no backfiring. Uh, there's no check engine light. I was getting check engine light periodically before I'd clear it. You know, I'd have random multiple misfire codes. I'll, I'll put those codes um, up for you. And I'm not getting the check engine light. It's, it seems to be running without hesitation, no backfires. This is great. So I'm going to go ahead and put the beauty covers on the engine, put the wheel back on, put the splash guard underneath the radiator back on, and put the car down, take it for a little drive. Uh, I think this is a uh, job done. So if you like this video and it helped you, please like, share, subscribe help my YouTube channel and I really want to get a new camera and you guys can help me get that camera so I can make you some clearer videos. Bye for now.